everybody, thanks for joining. If you're new, my name is Eva, and if you're returning, thanks for coming back for another video. Okay, so today's video I think is gonna be kind of interesting, possibly controversial, <laughs> but as you can tell from the thumbnail, it's all about this bag. In the first part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the why, why I got this bag, why I think it's interesting or relevant to uh, our community of handbag lovers. The second part of the video, I'm gonna talk about the artist who created the artwork on this bag. And in the third part of the video, I'm gonna give you some shopping tips in case you might be looking to add a bag like this or a similar one in your collection. May oh, by the way, maybe you can see that Charlie's right here. He's trying to get into the shot. <laughs> okay, so first of all, why did I buy this bag? Well, I found out about it through another YouTuber and I will link that video down below. As soon as I saw it, I was immediately drawn to it. Not only because it's in the style, shape, and inspiration of the Hermes Birkin bag, but because of the color. And if you know me, you know that I am very drawn to the color fuchsia, fuchsia pink. And I also love the graffiti style of this bag, not only in the writing, but you know, in the splatter paint effect that's all around it. I know that might not seem to be my style if you've watched my videos before, but it kind of is because I like edgy bags, I like fun and unusual bags, and I especially like artist hand-painted bags. So this is a dupe bag, not a replica. There's no branding, no logo or anything like that, but obviously the design of the bag is inspired by the Hermes Birkin. And if that's not already obvious, then we're more obvious here by saying that this is not a Birkin, and I absolutely love that. I get such a kick out of the play on that, that it's like, over obvious, like, hello, Captain Obvious. Like, I'm not gonna be carrying a Birkin around, so let's just make that really clear to the world that this is not that. So it kind of made me think like, you know, this is a joke, it's it's not a Birkin, it's kind of a joke about the Birkin. But at the same time, I think it actually reinforces the status and the significance of the Birkin. And it reminds me of something that I recently read by Elsa Schiaparelli. By the way, I did a recent video on my interest in Schiaparelli. Right now, I just realized I'm wearing the brooch today, so it's all tying together. But anyway, she said in her autobiography how she didn't mind being copied or imitation because her designs were very heavily copied uh, when she started her fashion house. She said something to the effect of, being copied means my designs are relevant. If her designs weren't copied, that means they wouldn't be in the spotlight. So that meant that her designs were relevant and significant to the public. That's not a real quote. That's just the essence of what I remember reading here in her autobiography. Okay, I went back and found the quote that I was thinking of. The moment that people stop copying you, it means that you are no longer any good and that you have ceased to be news. So keeping that in mind, it does make me think that this is kind of a, a nod or like paying homage to the big Birkin, you know, that if you're a handbag look, lover, maybe you're not interested in Hermes having one yourself, but you still realize and appreciate the significance of it and the impact that it's had on those who just love and adore handbags and love to collect handbags. But at the same time, I do feel like there's a little bit of irreverence here. Um, you know, and that it might be a joke about the Birkin or that it's just like bringing the Birkin down a couple of notches with having this dupe with this graffiti effect on it. And the splatter paint effect, I think not only gives it that fun and casual vibe, but also kind of that irreverent vibe to the Birkin. I think all of those things work together to give the, like the overall impact of this bag. And I know sometimes when we non visual artist people see something like this, we might think to myself, well, I could do that. Just give me some paint and I'll throw it on there. But this thrown on splatter is an artistic statement. And I wanna now talk to you about the artist. The artist is Anka Barbu, and she has had her work displayed in galleries in both New York and Miami. She describes herself as an abstract expressionist, and she was originally from Romania, and now she resides in Miami. She has her own website, barbu.com, and her bags are sold in over 200 boutiques in the US. From what I understand, those are not freestanding like Barbu boutiques, at least yet anyway, but these boutiques sell all different kinds of brands and this is just one brand that happens to be sold you know, in the boutique. And by the way, that's where I bought this particular bag was in a boutique like that and I'll talk more about that in a minute. So now I want to show you what came with this bag, the lock 
and the clochette. We have this little bracelet which is on here as a charm. It is removable and then having a little bracelet on here actually reminds me of the style of uh, Jane Birkin. You know how she put a lot of charms and little things like this on her bag. It came with this small twilly type scarf and it was wrapped here around the front handle. That was a cute effect and I'll show a picture of it when it first arrived to me looking like that. And it also came with this larger scarf that was folded and just kind of uh, draped off this back handle here. So those are two fun things that I don't plan to use on this bag, but I might use them on other bags as decoration. It did also come with this little horse charm and this was also on the back of the bag. This strap, which is studded, it is a shoulder strap. It's not adjustable, but it's the length that you could put on your shoulder. This is the studded side and this is the, oh, Charlie. <laughs> and this is the fabric side. And it came with this leather strap that attaches here on the side grommets. And this is adjustable and so you could wear this crossbody or over the shoulder. So here's a view down inside the bag. There are some paint splatters down in there, but I don't mind that at all. I actually really like that effect. There's a zip pocket on the back wall of the bag. Front wall of the bag, there is a slip pocket here. And the bag does have feet and as you can see, there are even more paint splatters on the bottom. I just love this color combination. Not only the bag itself being the fuchsia pink, but how you have some like neon pink and baby pink and the glitter and gold glitter all mixed in together. I just love that combination. If you're not into this bag, I know you're not interested in the shopping aspects, but I wanted to let you know that she does other bags besides this uh, Birkin dupe style. From what I can gather, this is an example of one of her older kinds of work. Her older work actually used dupe bags, you know, as the canvas. From what I see today on her current website, there are no dupe designs used, but just some classic bag designs that feature her artwork. And some of her current pieces include like this splatter effect with sayings on it. And some of her bags are just beautiful canvases for her art. So as I mentioned, she has a web website, barboo.com. Prices on that website vary from $200 all the way up to $700, depending upon the size and style of the bag. Oh, and now that I think about it, I do remember seeing some very high-end prices that were attached to bags where she had recreated artistic masterworks on the bags. If you are interested in this kind of style of bag where her art is on a dupe style, then you might be able to find something like that on a boutique website. And that's where I found this bag. I got this from a boutique in Texas where they have a brick and mortar store, but they also have an online presence. And they sent me a handwritten note, which I really appreciate. I would also encourage you to check out the pre-loved market. I've seen some of her bags on eBay, Poshmark, and Macari. And because I liked this bag so much, I was just looking for some other options, maybe a little bit more wearable with other outfits. And I found this cute bag on Macari. I should say that both of these bags are in the 30 size, 30 centimeter size. So as you can see, this is the black version and it is decorated with these metallic hearts. This one doesn't have the same splatter effect, so it's plain on the back and bottom, but it has such, I think, a fun and unique flair. And like I said, I really love these hand painted bags. It also came with a studded strap. But as you can see, the fabric on the back is a little bit different with a red and black emphasis. And this bag also came with the two scarves, one for the front handle, and this was draped on the back handle. And this has the strap as well. This bag actually has a nameplate here on the back wall with the artist name, Anka Barbu. I'm really liking these. I think the leather feels great. From what I can see and tell, it's a very good quality leather. I like the design. I like the open toed. I just liking a lot of things about these bags. Now I'm not gonna be uh, you know, starting my own official journey or anything, but I'm saying that having this dupe has given me an appreciation for why it's such a beloved bag. Okay, I'd love to hear your point of view. I think that there might be some positive and negative reactions to this, but your points of view are welcome here. So let me know what you think. Is it fun, irreverent, maybe a little bit of both? I'd be really anxious to hear from you. So thanks so much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.